Now we come to one of the most important concepts in measure theory, which is that of Lebesgue integral of uh, an unsigned measurable function. So, as I've said before, Lebesgue developed the theory uh, of uh, measures and uh, integrals so that one could have an advantage uh, over Riemann integration and which could be applied to arbitrary uh, sets as well. So, in this lecture we will look at the definition of the Lebesgue integral for unsigned measurable functions and then we will uh, generalize this definition first to real valued functions and then to complex valued measurable functions. So, let us look at the definition. So, first recall, recall that we have defined, defined the uh, simple Lebesgue integral for simple functions, simple functions, simple measurable functions. let us say S from a set. Uh, so, we will take a non-negative simple measurable function. Then it is of the form, it is a finite sum of scalar values alpha i multiplied by the indicator functions of uh, E i's which are measurable subsets of uh, this um, measurable space x. So, then the simple Lebesgue integral S d mu is nothing but the sum i equal to 1 to n alpha i mu of E i. So, here x v mu is a measure space and so we have defined the simple uh, Lebesgue integral. Now, we also have that any non-negative or rather unsigned, we have defined what is an unsigned measurable function, unsigned measurable function f from x to 0 infinity with plus infinity included can be approximated approximated from below by an, an increasing sequence of sequence of non-negative uh, simple functions, simple functions. So, we have S n a sequence of simple functions says that S n increases to f pointwise, which means that it is a non decreasing sequence of simple functions and the limit a pointwise limit of this sequence is precisely f. So, we know we have defined the Lebesgue integral for simple functions and we know that uh, th there always exists a sequence of simple functions that converges from below to any measurable uh, unsigned measurable function f. So, it makes sense to define the Lebesgue integral, Lebesgue integral of, uh, of an unsigned simple function. So, let, so x b mu is a measure space measure space and f b n unsigned measurable function unsigned measurable function uh, then we define the Lebesgue integral x f d mu as follows. So, this integral 
of f d mu is by definition the supremum of simple functions which are point wise bound uh, bounded above by the measurable function f and you take the simple integral of s so it is the supremum of the simple integrals uh, of simple functions f s which are bounded above point wise by f so note that this is the equivalent uh, or rather the generalization of the lower darbo integral where we took for a bounded uh, uh, function on a com compact interval in r we took the piece wise constant functions which were bounded above by f and we took the piece wise constant riemann darbo integral of um, those functions so this is a generalization of the lower riemann darbo integral so now the question arises why we take the lower one and uh, we don't define the first the lower and upper and when they two uh, when the those two agree then we say that the lebesgue integral exists as we did for riemann integration so so we have to say some words about the justification for using the lower integral as our definition for lebesgue integral using the lower integral so first is that if f is an unbounded function is an unbounded function then there are no simple functions then there are no simple functions uh, s says that f is bounded above by s so we can uh, simply view it for example on r so we have the real line let's say that we uh, we define our function only on the positive part and say that f is bounded unbounded near zero so this is our f fx this is unbounded near zero so it goes to plus infinity near zero so if this is the case then any simple function you take which you want to be higher than f point wise so suppose that we take here this value so remember that we have to take um, simple functions which are defined over all of r and then it has to be point wise bounded above everywhere uh, it should bound uh, f everywhere um, point wise so if you take for example this value here and then after some partition you take this value here and this value here and so on but since we are only allowed finitely many we have to stop somewhere and for this region in this region it the the condition f less than or equal to s is violated so we can try to define it for uh finitely many pieces of the real line measurable pieces but since we are only allowed to have finitely many at some point we will run out of uh space and some part of the unbounded part of f will remain uncovered or uh, uh unbounded by this simple function s which we need to be uh which we need to be higher than f for every value of x 
so in this region we cannot have that uh, f is bounded above by s so there are no simple functions even in the case uh, of the real line and f unbounded near zero we um, do not have any simple functions which are uh, which bound above this uh, point wise this function f so we have uh, that unbounded functions if we want to define uh, if we wanted to define so if we wanted to define the upper Lebesgue integral which we can define for example as the infimum of f less than or equal to s as simple of the simple uh, integrals of these simple functions s then this infim then this is uh, an, an empty set and you will get simply zero so it's it doesn't give you anything uh, interesting on the other hand so uh, in this case we see that the upper lebesgue integral doesn't make sense so in this case so if f is unbounded so let me write it here so if f is unbounded the upper integral is not interesting in the sense that it only gives you value 0. So, that is one reason why we take only uh, be, uh, the lower Lebesgue integral to define the our Lebesgue integral for uh, unsigned measurable functions. The other reason so, this was our first reason that if f is unbounded then there are no simple functions f less than or equal to s. In the second reason we can also say that even if f is bounded even if f is bounded but takes a positive value on a set of measure infinity then also the upper integral is not interesting. So again we can see an example. So now we allow bounded functions but uh, it has to take um, a strictly positive value on a set of infinite measures. So, for example, we can take uh, this function decreasing to 0. For example, we can take fx equals e to the power minus x. We know that this can be integrated over the positive real line, but if you want to define it via the upper Lebesgue integral, then again because we have um, only finitely many choices for the simple functions so we can define it like this here like this here like this here and so on but at some point you will have uh, you have we have to cover an infinite portion of the real line with a finite value so then if you write this function as s we will have s is uh, bounded below by f everywhere but we have that the simple integral of s over r for the Lebesgue measure here is going to be plus infinity because this uh, measure of this part is plus infinity. So even if you have bounded functions but which takes a strictly positive value um, over a set of infinite measure then we see that uh, the upper upper integral 
is plus infinity. So, again it is not interesting. So, we see that the lower one makes sense always even if it is even if your function is unbounded or if it is bounded um, but with a uh, with strictly positive values over a, a set of infinite measure because the of the fact that here if you want to take a lower integral then we have always that this zero value is allowed um, for when you start to approximate f from below. So, because our zero value is accessible here this function was strictly positive. So, when you approximate from above zero is not accessible, but when you approximate from below zero is accessible. So, when you have a set of infinite measure then you can just put a zero uh, for the simple function and then uh, your lower Lebesgue integral will still give you finite values. So, this is these are the couple of reasons why our definition for the Lebesgue integral is only the lower Lebesgue integral and not the upper Lebesgue integral. So, now we look at some immediate basic properties for the Lebesgue integral which are immediate from the definition of uh, how we have stated the definition for the Lebesgue integral. The first one is monotonicity which says that if f and g are unsigned measurable functions and f is pointwise bounded by g then the Lebesgue integral of f is less than or equal to the Lebesgue integral of g. So, this is the monotonicity property. The second one is linearity with respect to scalar multiplication. So, we have seen that the simple integral is linear with respect to scalar multiplication and of course, this also holds for the Lebesgue integral for unsigned measurable functions. So, if alpha is a constant is a positive constant and f is an unsigned measurable function, then the integral of alpha f d mu is equal to alpha times the integral of f d mu. And the third is the agreement with the simple Lebesgue integral which says that if f is a simple unsigned measurable function then the Lebesgue integral as we have defined it uh, right now is equal to the simple. So, the second one is the simple Lebesgue integral on the right hand side and on the left hand side we have the, def, uh, the Lebesgue integral as we have defined using supremums of uh, simple functions uh, approaching from below. So, these two agree. So, I will leave all three as an exercise. So, these are left as an exercise. So, you should just check from the very definition that we can deduce all three properties stated here.